Hello everyone, this is Diane. I'm just playing in my craft room today. I don't even know if I should even do this video because I have a huge mess. You can see some of it right here. I am playing with slide mounts and slides. So I'm going to call this a, a stash astry because I have a stash of slide mounts. So what I started out doing was just getting out some of my uh, media to play with, colors to play with. So I used Distress Oxide sprays and other sprays that I have in my stash. And I used a little bit of these inks. I got these on the really good clearance at Hobby Lobby. And I haven't really done much with them. So I thought I'd play with them a little bit. And I used my Stampin' Up! watercolor crayons. So just playing with some things that I don't get out very often. Um, so let's see. This one is an assortment of, I've got colors all over my fingers, but this is Distress Oxide Sprays. You can see the oxidation look on there. This one was the, some of the ink. And I used this um, glossy dimension that I also got at Hobby Lobby on clearance um, and used a little stencil to put that gold on there. And this is inks also and it's the same stencil it just has a variety of I, the stencils downstairs because I took it down to wash it in the kitchen sink. Distress Oxides on this one. I think this one has Distress Oxide and the inks. This would be great in a mermaid journal. And so would this one because it has that scallop look that looks like scales. And let me show you what I did with some of these after I colored them. So this is one that I used the um, watercolor crayons on. And I stamped these little images and actually used the watercolor crayons to color the images also. And then this is a earring that I got at a flea market. So I just took this hook part off and added another jump ring to it. Punched a little hole in there and stuck it on there. So this could be at the bottom of the page as a little tuck spot and this could hang off the bottom of the bottom of the book. This one I used inks because it's quite bright and um, another earring and I stamped. This says make something pretty today. There's a little image in there. And this one I used a slide. I opened it up and took the film out and stamped that little lady and put it right, oh I put it on the back and then I added these little charms. I had to put them on a, um, what do you call it, one of those pins, the straight things, you know. Let me show you because I can't think of the name. I'm still suffering from jet lag, these things. It's got the little stopper at the bottom, but I still had to put a little tiny bead because these the holes were too big, they slid right off the sticks. So so I put the bead on there and the charm and then made the loop and then put it on jump ring. So this can just be a little decoration at the bottom of a page. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with this video. What am I doing? I don't know. Maybe I will just color some more. I don't have any more of the slide mounts over here. So this one, I'll just, I don't need to open this one because the slide is already gone and I can just put the stamped image behind it. Oops, sorry. Oh, I think this one goes with that, but it doesn't really matter. You know, I could sandwich whatever I stamp, I could sandwich it in there. Or you can use acetate and put a dried flower or something in there and sandwich it in, or you can just glue something to the back. 
So these, I this one I took apart and took the negative out of it. So might as well just take it right off. Okay, I'm gonna wet it. And then I'm going to spray it with Distress Spray, Distress Oxide. Let's do peeled paint. I bought these at the Good Clearance Sale at Hobby Lobby, so my choices were limited in color. Um, but I got three different green, uh, greens, two browns, two blues, and a purple. It's a kind of a bright green, isn't it? Let's use some vintage photo. I'm not trying to color this half because you won't see that half. Whoops, it's a lot of vintage photo. green all the way. There's a penciled in date on this. It's from 1966. This one is cracked pistachio. That's just water, so they can oxidize together. looks like the brown is gone, but you can still see brown in there. You can see multiple colors in there. So let's use this um, it's a stamp. looks like this. I'm going to ink that with some brown. I've got soft suede here, stamping up soft suede. This is an old stamp, so I'll have to see if it's still if it's still good. Or old ink pad, I mean. It's good enough for what I want. still see the Kodak, the red Kodak printing on there, which I like. Now, I can have it like this or like that. Depends on what stamp I want to use behind it. I've used um, images of ladies, but you can use words, um, other whatever image you want in there. On this one, I took um, a black pencil and kind of outlined. Just give it a little definition around the squares. So what do I want to put in here? I think this guy's going to be too big. Yeah, his face is too big. I do have some larger slides here. Where'd he 
go. Yeah, he'd be good in that. Um, I have a Mona Lisa. She'd be cute. So this is how I did it. I took a piece of cream colored cardstock. This is actually um, the catalog card blanks that I have. Make sure I like the image. Then I took a pencil and traced around. And then I cut it inside those lines so it's smaller. I like her. It looks good. Then after the glue dries, I can punch it and put something on it. I don't have a lot of flat discs that I, that's what I want to use is just little flat things. <clears throat> so I don't know if I'll actually complete this until I get a chance to find some. I'm going to take all my jewelry stuff, all my beads and wires and everything downstairs this evening and get it all sorted and organized because it's pretty much a mess. And maybe I'll find what I want, but I will add something to the bottom of this. So you can color these any way you want to, whatever media you happen to have. Just play and have fun with what you have. Let's take this one. And find me some more cardstock. mess here. She's cute. And I have this one. I think I'll do this lady and these pansies. I don't have to stamp them together. I'm going to cut them out separately. Now, let's think about adding a little color to our image. Like I did with those, these girls. I've got my watercolor crayons here. These are Stampin' Up. They don't have them anymore. They didn't have them in their catalog for very long. Got a purple here.
I have a water brush out here somewhere. If I put things away when I'm done, I'd be able to find what I want. But what's the fun in that? Well, I'm not seeing it here. There it is, hiding under my heat gun. So this has water in it. And since it's a watercolor crayon, it will blend with the water and spread. So I didn't color, I didn't fill in completely. I just put some color on and now I can spread it to where I want it. Since I have purple here, this is what I'm using, and there's a little bit of purple in there. So I'll put a little purple behind her. You can use watercolor pencils. You could use watercolors. You can use colored pencils or chalk or whatever you have to add color. Get your children's crayons out. I don't need to fill in the whole space because a lot of this is going to get cut off. And of course I'd like some yellow on these pansies. And I'll give her a yellow dress. dress might not even show up. Not much of it. This one is called Vanilla. Let's see if I can add a touch of color to her cheek without ruining it. I can just touch this to the crayon. You have to be careful not to make her look like a clown. Just a little touch of pink on her cheeks. Okay, looks good. Of course you can measure what you what size you want, but for me it's just easy to trace. I can see right where I don't want to cut her chin off, so I'm gonna put it right there. Do the flower, the leaves. So I got my printer set up and it's a touch screen, so I have to learn how to operate it. I was pretty proud of myself. I didn't know how to do the right click to copy and paste because there's no right and left buttons on it. But I googled it 
and I figured it out so I was able to link my Etsy shop to my video yesterday and TLC creates to my video but what I couldn't do was link my printer I always have trouble with that my printer is sometimes I would have it linked to my old computer and then sometimes it would just disconnect and it was really hard to get it connected again but my son came over and he doesn't like trying to hook up printers because they're always so persnickety but he was able to get it to print something and I'm hoping that I will be able to I don't have anything in this laptop to print and I have to get my next design team project stuff to ask for that so that I have something to print and try it out. I had music I had to print. Um, a new song we're going to be doing in church tomorrow and I'm playing the piano so the pastor's wife sent me the music and I had to print it. So that's what my son was able to print for me. did upload pictures from Alaska to my Facebook page so if you're friends with me on Facebook you can go see my Alaska pictures how pretty I like those colors oh boy I'm sweating hot in here. I turned the air conditioner off so I could do this video without the noise. I complain about that all summer. I can't have the fan on or the air conditioner while I'm making a video. I was hoping to go to the flea market today. I haven't been in a month and a half. Um, but I had people, I had three different people coming this morning at different times for one thing or another. The pastor's wife was going to bring the music over that I couldn't print. My son ended up printing another song, but so she came over and she played it for me so I'd know how it's supposed to go. And then my contractor came over, he wanted to go up in my attic and check out the roof situation because they're going to be coming this week finally to fix my roof replace my roof there look how pretty that is and in between those two coming my son came over to help me with my laptop so it was noon by the time people left and oh I thought I'd eat my lunch and then see and it's just so hot I just didn't want to go those barns aren't insulated or aren't um yeah they're not insulated they're not air conditioned they do have big fans stationed around but it's hot in there and i'm jet lagged <laughs> so i am going to wait one more week to go to the flea market i'll go to the monday one i hope if it's not raining I'm just thinking, I think she's too big. She works. I like her. She's my favorite of these three. So, my Alaska trip, we went to Harrisburg. I don't know why we started from Harrisburg. That was 
the, the couple that I went with, the older couple that I went with, it was their trip. They planned it. They, they always like to have people go with them on their vacations. I don't know why, but they always try to get people to go along. And I wanted to go and um, got my friend, another widow friend, to go. So we went to Harrisburg, spent the night there, and then we drove, um, flew from Harrisburg to Seattle. And then the cruise, the, the vacation group took over. I didn't, I moved her way over there because I got ink on this page. Um, so as part of the plan, we had to spend the night in Seattle so the hotel there was provided. It was part of the part of the plan that we paid for. So we spent the night in Seattle and then then we got on our bus, our tour bus. They call it a coach. They said the difference between a coach and a bus is that a coach has a restroom on it and a bus doesn't. So we had a coach and we drove, we took a tour, just a bus tour around Seattle and then drove across the Canadian border to Vancouver. Had to go through customs, of course. Then we drove around Vancouver. I'm not, I don't remember where we stopped for lunch. I don't remember if it was in Vancouver or Seattle. But we did have lunch at one of those places. And spent the night in Van Vancouver. Did we? No, we didn't spend the night in Vancouver. We got on the ship in Vancouver and started our cruise. I don't want to use, this is the one I'm using. So anyway. That was really a beautiful cruise. Our weather was fantastic. Um, it was unseasonably warm in Alaska while we were there. The sun was out. It did rain, sprinkled, not really rain, but sprinkled some one day. The day we went to Ketchikan, it was a little bit rainy. But the rest of the trip was warm and sunny and lovely. So, we did a whale, um, whale watch. So we got on this smaller boat and listened to the lady who loves whales talk about the whales. And we, as we were, as the boat was driving to where we needed to go to see the whales. And we actually saw quite a few whales. You don't see the whole whale. You don't see their head, usually. You just see the backs and the and the fins on the back and you might see the tail you see the spout you see them come up and blow the spout clear so you see that first and then you know where the whale is and then you watch for them they come up three times to breathe that's when you get to see their back and their fins and then after the third time they dive back down and that's when you see the tail come up so I got a good picture of a whale tail or fluke. There's that one. I could have stamped some script or something on the slide for most of these. Well, not that one, but I did stamp background stuff or I stenciled um, with texture paste. So this is like a mixed media project, which I love. So I'm not sure what else I'll do to these. I could put a little gold around there. My artsy. So that was exciting to get to see the whales. And then as we were walking back from the pier to our bus, we heard 
the strange noise and we thought it was a person making some weird noise but then we realized it was two bald eagles sitting right next to each other in a tree and they were communicating with each other and I have a really good telephoto zoom lens on my camera a lot of people were just using their phones for pictures but I took my camera I love to take good pictures so I don't consider myself a photographer I don't do anything fancy I don't change lenses or anything but I do know how to frame a picture and know that I'm going to get a good picture so I zoomed in on those eagles and I got a great picture of two bald eagles sitting right next to each other in the tree so that was cool And then I will add some sort of dangly things to these and I will probably use them as tuck spots or pockets on a page. I could close it up and you know what would be cool would be to cover the back and make it look pretty also but have a magnet in there and use it as a like a magnet um, bookmark. That would be neat. Maybe I'll do that with one. This one looks like a vintage, rusty thing. I have this little lady too. Um, you can tell I'm not really focused, right? <laughs> so I'm not really sure what I want to be doing. But it's a weekend, so I'm just playing. Try to get back into the swing of things after my two-week vacation. What else did we do? The ship was lovely, of course. So the time we spent on the ship was nice. We got to see some shows. I got to see a fantastic um, string quartet with a piano. So they called themselves a quintet. Oh my goodness, these young people. I don't know, the oldest was 27. So oh, they were fantastic. They were fantastic and it was so nice to be able, it's a, it was in a small room, not in a big theater. So we were able to be up, be closer. And so a couple of times I got to sit in the front of the room because they played, I don't know how many times during the week. Sometimes, sometimes it was three times in a day, but then there were some days they didn't play. Anyway, it was really fun to get to watch how they used their bows. It was very interesting. I took violin lessons when I was a kid, but I took one year and then my violin teacher moved away. And then I didn't have a teacher anymore. This one would be better that way, but the globe is better that way. Maybe I'll do the balloon. Yeah, let's do that. So that was nice, being able to hear, the, hear that. I liked that better than the big stage show that they had. I, my husband and I had done two cruises, and we enjoyed the stage shows a lot. These, This one, they, they weren't very good, I didn't think. So the quartet, the strings and piano made up for that. Um, Oh, we took a train ride. Our cruise was a seven-day cruise. Oh, on the ship we toured, uh, we cruised Glacier Bay. Talk about beautiful. So the, the ship just very, very slowly cruised up one channel and down another of Glacier Bay and stopped at one point so we could get a lot of good pictures of the glaciers. It wasn't quite what I expected. My friend and I both expected, you know, like, walls of ice, <laughs> but it wasn't like that. It's mountains, 
and there's snow and some ice on the mountains, but then you'd see the, the glaciers in between the mountains, like flowing out to the bay. Of course, we can't see them moving, but they're moving every day. So it was beautiful. And the, the day was perfect. It was sunshiny and the waters were turquoise. And oh, if you if you get a chance to go to, whoops, sorry, my Facebook. I'll see, I don't know if I can leave a link. I'll try. You can see those pictures. After I print some, maybe I'll just, you know, show them to you here. But I haven't printed any. I want to stamp on this. I have this very large collage stamp. I could stamp on two at a time. I stamped on that one already. So then after our seven day cruise, we were off the ship and we had a three day land tour. That was, we got to see some nice stuff, but it was exhausting because we were just on a bus every day for hours driving from one place to another, but it was beautiful. So we went to, we got off in Seward. And then we took a bus up to Denali. Well, we took we took a bus to the train station and most of us took the train ride. A few people didn't pay the upgrade for the train ride, but we had a four hour train ride to Denali. They look cool. I like them. So it's ink, it just stays on ink, but it's on like a it's on the sprays and paint, so it's gonna take a couple a little longer to dry than normal. I, oh, that looks good with that. Those colors and the stamping. Looks really good. So then at Denali, we toured um, part of Denali National Park because that park is huge. I forgot how many acres he said, but it is huge. So we got to see some of it and we got to, we had a nice clear day where we could see Mount Denali, which used to be called Mount McKinley. It is the largest or the tallest mountain in North America. So we could see that in the distance, but it was, even though it was in the distance, it was way bigger than all the other mountains. And it's covered in snow. The other mountains were gray or green, but McKin or Denali was white. And I got some really good pictures because it was so clear. They said that 20% of the people that go to Denali Park get to see the mountain. And of those 20, and of those, 20% of them um, get to see the whole thing. Or they, they get to see either the tip or the base, but we got to see the whole thing because the clouds went away. It's usually covered in clouds, mist, fog. So you might get to see either the top or the base of it, but we got to see both. And when he said, when they said the whole thing, like the base of it, I'm pretty sure we're not seeing the base because we weren't at the base of the mountain. I think we were seeing, you know, as far as we could before the other mountains were in front of it and covered it. So we did see all that we could see of it and it was huge. It was pretty impressive. We went to the Iditarod headquarters and they, I guess they trained some dogs there. The owners of the dogs do their own training, but they did have a sled team there and they offer a two minute ride for $10. Only one of our group wanted to do that, so she did that. 
as soon as they, as soon as the dogs know they're going to go, they're hitched or, hitched to the sled, but the sled is staked down so they can't pull it away. But they want to go. They are barking and leaping and jumping up and down and straining at the bit to go, so to speak. And as soon as that pin was pulled, they were off. And the dogs that weren't connected to the sled, there were still some dogs chained to their little dog house. And they wanted to go. They were jumping and leaping and barking, wanting to go. They love it. I like that one. Um, I don't think so. I want him to be a little bit shorter. I don't want to cut him off that much. Butterfly would be nice in there. Butterfly and a bee. So I didn't know. I figured we would be three hours behind because the West Coast is three hours behind the East Coast. So when we went to um, where were we? I think I was thinking Harrisburg is an hour different from us, but I don't, I don't think it is. But it seems like we lost one hour. Yeah, I think. I think we lost or gained an hour when we went to Harrisburg. No, that can't be right. Anyway, we ended up when we we were three hours ahead when we went to Seattle. But when we got to Alaska, we were four hours ahead. Alaska is pretty much in its own time zone, I think. So we were four hours ahead. And so when we came back, all in one day, we lost four hours. That's why I'm jet lagged. I can't even handle the daylight savings one hour change. It takes me days to recuperate from that. So I was up for, I don't know how many hours I was up, but I didn't sleep. We couldn't sleep on the plane. We were up all day waiting for our plane. And then our plane didn't leave until 8 o'clock, 8.20. It was actually closer to 9 when we finally took off. And figured we'd sleep on the plane, but there was no way we could sleep on the plane. That plane was so uncomfortable. It was United, and it was six seats across, three on one side, three on the other aisle, and a very narrow aisle, and the armrest in between each seat was awful. It was so uncomfortable. It was just metal, a thin metal piece and you couldn't rest your arm on it comfortably and besides there's somebody else there wanting to put their arm on it and then the seats in front of us were hard and your knees touch it and I'm not that tall my husband wouldn't have been able to do this he was 6'5 he would have had to have the aisle seat with his legs sticking out in the aisle it was awful and then the noise uh, we were way in the back right by the restrooms and so there was always a line of people there bumping me and trying to scooch past each other and practically sitting on my lap. <laughs> it, was, it was bad. And then the, the stewardesses had some of their supplies stored in the compartment above my seat. So they're up there all the time getting stuff and slamming the thing. And there's just no way we could sleep. It was awful. So then we landed in Harrisburg at 5 in the morning. Oh, Chicago. That's Chicago first. That's where we gained and lost an hour. I knew it wasn't Harrisburg. So we were in uh, Chicago at five something in the morning and had to wait a couple hours for our next flight. And then two hours to Harrisburg. And then a three hour drive, four hour drive home. We stopped for lunch. So we had all been up for all of that time, 
including the guy who had to drive us home for four hours. So we were pretty tired when we got home. It's a hard way to end your vacation. But once I recuperate, then I'll have all the good memories. It was awesome. It was worth it. Just beautiful. What else did we do? We saw an animal preserve in Denali where they um, rescue injured wild animals. So they had bears and reindeer, muskox, the black tail, uh, yeah, black tailed Sitka deer, Sitka black tailed deer, uh, porcupines even. I didn't get to see the porcupine, it was hiding. So they, um, you know, doctor them, and if they if they can be released into the wild again, they'll do that. But some of them won't be able to take care of themselves because of their injury or or because they just don't know how because they were hurt or whatever. They some of them are there for the rest of their lives. So that enabled us to get see to get to see some of the wildlife. We did see a bull moose by the side of the road. We saw a doll sheep on the mountain on the cliff side, like just standing on the rock wall. <laughs> it was funny. And I saw a bear when we were at the Glacier Bay. So it was cool. And the bald eagles and the whales. Well, I think that's going to do it for me. I've been rambling and just making a mess and I hope I was, wasn't too boring. I know my, my voice sounds flat and tired today because I feel flat and tired, but I just wanted to play, and I thought that you'd like to come along, so I hope you didn't mind, and if you did, you didn't have to keep watching. I'm rambling, babbling. So, I did get to make a few embellishments. I still have four more that are colored, but not filled in. So this was fun. I'm going to clean up this mess now, and I will probably be seeing you again one day this week. I don't know what day. But I'll be back. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.